So last time we, <clears throat> what did we do? Yep. Um, we derive an operator, right? Um, how is that different from what you see in an introductory mechanics class? Like 2420. You do see the moment of inertia, but uh, it's definitely not in vector form. Okay, so we're going to continue a little bit down that path, but we're going to make, um, we're going to go a few places. So we derive that expression from, from the definition of the kinetic energy. And the sum is over all the particles i of this rigid body. We get rid of the translation uh, motion, so this is a rigid body that is rotating about some point. So all of these velocities are tangential. And I think that, that was all we assumed. So we're going to consider this situation again. Um, the other equation that we use ended up being this one. Uh, where did it come from? We found this really cool operator that tells you uh, let's move back and forth between the uh, the system of a when you're on the rigid body and when you are in space. So very useful. So this is um, so vi is in space coordinates. That's the other uh, assumption. Okay, so this one you know it's easy to rewrite it as. I guess we can just put another vi in here, and then these are vectors. This is the dot product. We can substitute this value for one of these, and we end up with We also found out last time that there's only one value for the for the angular velocity in a rigid body. Okay, so this is the uh, the scalar uh, triple triple product. So the one we had used before a few times was uh, cross over here and cross over here. Uh, so this one we're going to use is the, uh, how it changes under a circular shift. So we have our three vectors over there. So A dot, B cross C equals Sure that I get it right? Yeah. Mm 
So you move this one over here, and you know you have to uh, move the rest to the left. So the last one will be. So then we can write this one as we take the omega out. Uh, this one's going to be ri. This one is going to be vi. OK. What is this quantity? Um, along with this one, right? But we have it. So it's the angular momentum. Mm -hmm. So the quantity that we derived was last time. Actually, we derived several. So this is going to be one half omega dot angular momentum. And the one that we had derived was angular momentum is weekly i omega vector. Um, so what is this weekly i? What kind? And how many, uh, what is its, its rank? Two. So it's a, it's a rank two tensor, right? OK. So I thought about it. Um, even if they're tensors, I'm going to continue writing the weekly thing. Uh, if you know, if it's really important to specify that it's a tensor, I'm going to put like ij over here. But you know, they are matrices, square matrices. Okay, so then we end up with this one and with this one, with this expression for the kinetic energy. Weekly. Looks kind of funky. What do you think? So it's just just putting this one over here, and so we end up with this um, kind of strange arrangement. Uh, that is equation five point sixteen. How is this operation called? Rotation. Rotation? So you have a vector, and then a matrix, and then another vector. Uh, unitary? Unitary? Mm. Unitary transformation. I guess you need a. a a matrix for a transformation. And you have uh, vectors over here. So I don't know if the unitary will refer to that, but. So it's called a contraction. So that is where we're going to take our detour. And so the first question that I have for you is, uh, what is a tensor? You, you talked about uh, ranks, Pedro. So um, 
what are uh, tensors of different ranks? So rank zero is a spin, spin node, mm -hmm. rank one is a vector, rank two is a matrix, and can you have uh, tensors of higher order? Yeah, I guess rank three would be like a, more like a three D matrix. No. A three D matrix? Well, not three D, like. I think it is a three D matrix. It's a, 3D matrix? it's a cube. Okay, a cube. Um, and you know you can go to higher ranks. It's just more difficult to imagine them. Mm -hmm. um, for those of you who program and you know, have you worked with like arrays, they are essentially matrices. Um, they're kind of standardized even among pr programming languages. And so, for example, you will, you know, if you have a three dimensional array, you can give a number here, um, another one here, another one here. And so, this one will be lines. This one will be, oh, okay, this is going to be this uh, particular plane. And this one will give you, will tell you, sorry, this is element, uh, line, and plane. And you can uh, continue. Even though you cannot imagine it, you know, for the computer is no problem to just find uh, the, the right uh, element. Um, so this is kind of my definition. It's a geometric uh, object. I think it is geometric. It's kind of like, like a Rubik's cube. Uh, it is independent of a basis, so it doesn't depend on whether you're using uh, Cartesian coordinates or spherical coordinates. Um, you need some sort of system. You need coordinates to, uh, to uh, uh, compute on the components and to visualize it, but they exist independently of that. So no matter what system you're using, the magnitude of the vector is going to be the same, or the determinant of the matrix is going to be the same. And there are rules that are consistent to go from uh, one rank to the next one. So the first one, degree zero, is a uh, dimension of scalar. Let's say type uh, scalar. Uh, what about its, uh, its geometry? If you wanted to associate a rank zero tensor to a geometrical element or shape, what would it be? One. Hmm? One. Point. You, a point. All right, so it's zero dimensional. One will be a vector will be its geometry. A line. This is one dimensional. This one will be, uh, what will it be? A square matrix. Um, yeah, square matrix. So this will be a plane, and this is two dimensional. Uh, what about a tensor three? So, are they called three D matrix or 
Yeah, I don't know if they have a name. So essentially, you will have um, it's like you know you grab your matrix and each one of these is a matrix and you just put all of them together. Uh, the shape has to be a, a cube because these grow uh, geometrically. And essentially, uh, what you're giving in each of these cases is a prescription to uh, for how to reach a particular uh, element. So. You know, these many elements in this direction, these many elements in this other direction, and so on. So let's call it, yeah, 3D matrix, I don't know. So it's a cube. Actually, this will be a square, whatever. You get the idea. So then what? So the aspects that I mentioned in my definition, uh, they're associated to uh, geometry, so they have a, ge a geometric object. They're independent of the basis. They exist, you can grab a cube and it exists no matter where you put it or how you um, try to describe it. Uh, it stores information for you. What kind of information can it store? And you know, the obvious ones, you can think about numbers. Can you put other stuff in there? Angles? Mm -hmm. What else? So are very advanced computational objects. Um, you can put operations, you can put uh, functions, you can put, for example, uh, you know, derivative Have you seen this one before? So it's a, a bunch of derivatives rather than Jacobian. Jacobian, right? So actually you can put whatever you want in there. They they're just store things for you. They're very uh, convenient things. So mm, So what is the number of elements? If you have, you know, ask, um, rank two or rank three. Hmm? So if we are in three dimensions, Euclidean space, and you're using a square matrix, how many elements are you gonna have? Nine. Nine, and you know, um, it goes on. Okay, so uh, the cool thing, there's many cool things about tensors. This is one of the interesting ones. This is the definition of a tensor. A, and it is def defined based on a transformation. So just like before we had, you know, a transform um, vector. Well, this is just transforming. Um, you know, we don't really know or care too much about 
how. Um, but all the elements are transformed from one system to another. Uh, in this case, from the unprimed system to the prime system. And here you can have as many indices as you want. And each index represents what? An axis, right? It could be a x, y, and z. You can continue. So it's going to be on this other side, you have the original one. And let's call it LMN. So the fact that you have the indices over there means that uh, this is a particular entry. So I'm going to have uh, A, I, L. So it's turning this one, the first, well, I guess the x index of this one with the x index of this one. JM, so second and second. Third and third. And you can have more, as many as you need. So a number of dimensions, uh, each index is a dimension. It will go from, um, I mean, an axis. It will go from one to the number of dimensions that you have. And you're going to have a coefficient uh, for each interaction. And yeah, that's it. That is the definition of a, of a tensor. So it looks. So we thought of it, it uh, a, 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 J, M. So it's, it's the one that joins this one and this one. So you can see it, maybe we, you know, if, if you had only two over here, you'll have a matrix. And each one represents, well, this one is number of rows. And then, um, columns, and over here you have the original matrix, and you want to find a series of coefficients that will transform each one of these elements into another one over here. So it is actually, um, it, we will see that matrix multiplication follows this, this rule. Um, but this is general, you know, it, it can be three dimensions, it can be four. Um, that's why I, I have more than, than two indices. So if we look at the, at particular instances, for example, for the uh, rank one, Uh, tensor, this is going to look just like Ti in the prime system is I use J over here because he's the next one, but we could use L to make it more, more clear. Um, so what goes in between? IL and that's it. So um, this one is going to represent a vector. How? Well, if you have three dimensions, then I 
could be one, two, or three, and so this will be the x, the y, and the z. And so you will have um, a number to transform from this one to this one, from this one to this one, and this one to that one. So you know, scalar multiplication of a of a vector by a scalar, does it follow this rule? Yeah. So this is completely equivalent to a vector, so rank one tensor is a vector. Um, these two have to be the same, so actually I and L are forced to be the same. So if we look at rank two, we're going to have T I J prime L M. So this one is going to be A I L and A J M. And remember that this is in, in Einstein notation. So we saw before, really, a week and a half, two weeks ago, that this is the definition, essentially, of a matrix. So you need a matrix over here to transform between um, rank two tensors. So a tensor we just saw is defined by its transformation properties and these transformations are orthogonal. Uh, what about a matrix? Is there a difference between a matrix and a tensor? A square matrix? Actually, I, I just mentioned a difference there, right? Matrices can be you know, 6 times 2 or 18 times 1. But tensors are forced to be squared. Anything else? Well, matrices are not bound to follow that. I mean, they, they can if they want to. But there might be other transformations that you can apply to matrices. And if you apply to a tensor, it will, it will not be a tensor anymore. So tensors are, in a way, a subset uh, of, of all matrices and all the properties that, that matrices can have. But they have, uh, so the ones that we have seen, like um, whether the matrix is symmetric or anti-symmetric, or whether it has a determinant, or the diagonals, the off-diagonals, like all this uh, methodology that we have built applies to, to tensors. <clears throat> Any other difference? And what about the rank zero? Ah, where does it come from? Let's see if this works. I think the red one was good. So rank zero will be the equivalent to what? Not not having one, not having any of these indices. So they are the same. They are the same. So it's actually one of the requirements of um, of the structure that they are. 
um, how do you call it, equivalent under inversion. So I guess if you have one index, you have kind of that line to mark you. If you have two, you know, you're in your, your square. But if you have nothing, you kind of exist you know, outside of that, and you're just a poor scalar. Invariant to orthogonal transformation. OK, let's look at this other, um, you can call it gymnastics. So weekly A is an operator. That means that it's a matrix. And it's going to act to operate on vector F. Don't think bad words in your in your head. I'm the only one thinking bad words? Okay. So we apply the, the operator to the vector f, and what does that give us? G, what, what is it? A matrix? Think about it. There's not that many options, though. <laughs> Matrix, vector, or scalar? Vector. It's a vector. So <clears throat> if we um, transform, we apply a transformation of the coordinate system, uh, we can apply it to B then, I mean to G, B, it's a transformation, so it's an operator, so it's a matrix. It's applied to G, and so the same operator is applied to the other side. So, very simple. We know that The inverse of B weekly times B weekly or weekly B is equal to one, right? So to, to, to the identity. So it means that we can put it here or put it here. You know, it's just a one. So we're going to put it um, in here. So we move the f over here, and over here we have weekly b inverse and b weekly b. Nothing illegal about that. Uh, we have a bunch of stuff in there. Um, but we essentially just rewrote this one because so BG is G. I don't think this is legit notation, but I'm going to use it to make it clear. So this is a vector G in the B basis. And F was also transformed by wiggly B. So it is. Um, it continues being the same vector, but it is expressed now in the B basis. So what is this thing? Hmm? Is it exactly A? It's playing the role of A. 
let's call it A prime. A will be prime. So this is uh, important well, for a variety of reasons. This is called, um, a, so this particular thing is called a similarity transformation. So these are computationally very cheap. Uh, so if you can transform your problem um, to make it easier to solve, then you, sh you should definitely do it. It's used um, extensively. And this tells you that to rotate a vector or a Cartesian system, you need the, uh, not just to rotate, but to, trans to transform. You need the transformation uh, matrix or operator in front. But to transform an operator, you need two of them. And you need the original and the inverse. Put them on both sides. And we're going to look at some of the um, linear algebra thing next time. But essentially, this is a way to, um, to solve the matrix. You, how do you call it? When you have one element and everything else is zero in the, in the rows and columns? Mm, di diagonalize? So it's, that's a, one way to diagonalize the matrix. Okay, so for orthogonal transformations, we know that the weekly inverse uh, is equal to B weekly the transform. Uh, I guess that's why it's cheap. Yes, they have to be, otherwise it doesn't work. So if we apply this to a tensor, which again is just a matrix, a square matrix, um, this is prime. Weekly uh, tensor, weekly transpose. So this implies we want to write it with the i and j. Tij prime equals, I'm going to put the original one. We're here. Right, I'm going to call it KL. Um, what goes in here? Remember that this is uh, one element you know, from the matrix. You want to transform from this element of the matrix to this other one. It's going to be. Uh, It's going to be A, I, K, so the first index, and A, J, L. And we don't have to write it down like this. These are just, they're all scalars. Uh, so we can put this one over here if you know, it looks prettier. So this is the, the transformation of a square matrix or a tensor. Does it agree with the rules that, I guess, with the definition of 
Hall of Tensor. It's kind of nice. Yeah. So, I mean, this, this proves that at least square matrices are tensors. Okay, so how do you construct a tensor? What do you need to construct one of them? I guess what are the what is the the what are the ingredients? If you had to build a two-dimensional space, what would you need? You only two axes, right? That are orthogonal. So, you know, with that analogy, what do you need to build a, a, tens a rank two tensor? To build to build the matrix, what do you need? A metal? Three x. Two. So this will be this, this will be vectors, right? So the operation is called um, it's called a not surprisingly a tensor product. So. You know, there's a dot product, there's a cross product. This is just another way of manipulating the indices of two vectors so that they do something useful. So, more rigorously speaking, this is another cool thing of tensors, um, to create a tensor of rank two, you need two rank ones. What do you need to create tensors of rank one? Rank one? Hmm? Of rank one? Of rank one? Well, they're made out of scalars. Yeah. So you can apply this multiplication rule uh, to consistently go to a higher rank tensors. So in three dimensions, let's see, if we have two vectors, or well, we have A and B, um, I need more space over here. So this tensor, can you see the marker? I can barely see it. I had like 20 markers, I don't know what happened. Okay, guess I'll keep the red. So this includes all the entries of the matrix. so on. So the definition of this uh, operation for rank two at least is you grab the x component of A, uh, the x component of B, you multiply them together, 
That's your first entry. So it looks like that, you know, and so on. This one's going to be a y b y a z b z, and this one a y b z. This one's well, they just look like these other ones. So by taking any two vectors that are not parallel, uh, you can form a tensor. So it will take too long to transform the whole matrix, but we're going to transform one element, one of the entries. We're going to look at this one. The transformation rule for vectors is that. So for ax prime, we're going to have this little a xj, i and i, x and x. And this is TJ. And for B, we have almost the same. What about for that entry in the tensor? Is XY. So this is prime, it's a transform. Here do uh, briefly need some summations. All right, so that should be exactly like in our definition of tensor, but we're substituting the uh, x and, uh, and y. And it does look the same. So this one, we can rewrite it as ax dy. Uh, we can Rearrange. Actually, it's not x, it's i and j. And because now we can complete that, they repeat. We don't need these ones anymore. Go back to Einstein notation. And this is equal to, we have this one and this one is a prime. X prime and BY prime. So uh, this construction, or I guess this way of constructing uh, tensors, does it follow the rule? Yeah, we just did it over there. There's only one rule. Okay, next operation, and we're getting close. Mm -hmm. It's gonna be the dot product. There's two ways in which you can do it, or you can find it. Uh, one option 
we have vector D, which is the result of a tensor dot a vector C. And you have a rule. So each element of D is going to be sum over all J, so 1, 2, 3. The uh, element of the matrix and the element of the vector C. And well, that's just a multiplication, matrix multiplication. The other option is when the vector comes before and um, before the dot. So here we have vector f dot the tensor. What do you think the result's going to be? So each element of E, again, you have the sum. You have Fj, which is kind of like this Cj. And then the element of the matrix. So this is just. It is the same. When you want to multiply, um, when you want to take the dot product of two vectors in your, in your uh, linear algebra class, how do you represent your vectors? So if both are vertical, you cannot do the multiplication, right? You cannot take the dot product. So what do you do? One of them is horizontal, the other one is vertical, right? So this is um, what you do over here. So if you, if you are going to do the dot product from the left uh, towards the tensor, then this one has to be horizontal. <clears throat> okay, so finally, um, we have this other operation. That is the one that we wanted to look at. F dot tensor dot C. So you can just do that, substitute. Uh, what you're going to get is Notation FI TIJ CJ. Looks pretty weird. You see that scalar? So this is the uh, contraction. So just like there are rules to construct um, tensors of higher rank, you can, you know, there are rules to uh, go back down. Yeah. Actually, I mean, it's what the book says, but I don't think contraction is like as well defined. I think if you ask someone in, you know, like Valdez Sanchez or something, 
uh, he's going to know like five things that are called contraction. But you know, for our purposes, this is the uh, operation that we're going to use. So what we were worried about was um, this guy. We had the uh, kinetic energy. And then we had uh, this expression. Hmm? What's that? Yeah, so my Z has a bar. Um, OK. I was actually kind of curious about this operation. So I just did the whole thing. Um, it's 1 half. Then you have this vector, wx, wy, wz. And then you can do that multiplication. So you have um, the elements of your you know and everything else um, of the moment of inertia tensor. And then over here you have your other vector. So WX, WY, and WZ. So this is just a regular, I guess everything is regular multiplication. So you have IXX, WX, IXY, WY, IXZ, WZ. This is just a number since you're just adding everything. Over here you have the rest of them. So B, W, X, and so on. And you end up with a bunch of numbers. So I guess the Einstein notation um, is useful sometimes. So some of the terms, this is how it looks like. Ixx and that one has omega x squared. Ah, I don't know how to do it now. Self-conscious. OK. Um, for uh, the next term, so x, y, we have w, x that you're multiplying, and y that you had there before. Not w, omega. And so for the diagonal terms, you have something that looks like that. So the next one, the other diagonal is y, y, and it's going to be omega y squared, and z, z, omega y squared. So you can just write it like that. Let's see if it makes any sense. the Einstein notation will be, uh, what is fi? What, what should we put in place of fi? So this, this is our definition of, of the contraction. So that 
all of those numbers um, are included in this Einstein sum. So T is one half of Why that would be vector? Well, for that one over there, or this one? Being this one? The component? Yeah, we are. Uh... So these components, remember that you can write it as, uh, it, it is the index. Okay. So it will be i or j or k. So it's omega i. I, I, J, and omega J. And it's pretty. When I and J are the same, we get these ones. Otherwise, you get the off diagonals, and the omegas are different, different components. So, Mm -hmm. So it will go by two Well, yes. So I guess each dot product decreases the rank by one. Okay, so for the next part, I did it the easy way. So the book says that that this quantity it is n hat dot i weekly that n hat and n hat is the the direction of the angular velocity so i guess a vector omega is equal to omega n hat and so that is equal to uh, mi ri squared minus ri dot n hat uh, squared. So maybe there's some weird algebra that they did. Um, how will you simplify uh, this expression, you know, with all those numbers? so that it looks as crisp as this one. You have to get rid of them. And it's easy because all the off diagonal have um, components of the angular velocity that are orthogonal and are multiplying. Yeah, so you just have to align the you align the the Cartesian plane, I mean the, the Cartesian system, to um, go in the direction of of the angular velocity. So you can align z, for example, the z axis uh, with n. And if that happens, then the kinetic energy simplifies a lot. You get one half, and then you have that component, that part of the matrix, and this one is 
the magnitude of the angular velocity squared in that direction. And this is actually perfectly legit because remember that uh, the vectors exist no matter how you measure them. So you can uh, align the Cartesian system. Um, but if you, if you do that, and here's the interesting part, uh, how do you do that? How do you align the, the Cartesian system? Let's say that you start with a Cartesian system that is like this, right? So I guess like this. And you have this object that is rotating like this, right? So you want to align it like this. So you cannot move the object, you have to align your, the, the Cartesian system. How do you do that? Um, usually if you're solving a homework problem, you just say that you align them. But uh, if you want to be more rigorous, then whatever you had at the beginning, you had to apply the transformation matrices or operators. And when you apply the transformation operators, um, you're, gonna, you're going to apply it to I, right? So you're going to have, um, well, actually not that structure, it's going to look This is the rotation uh, operator. So you know, this, this is the similarity transformation. But I mentioned before this is equal to uh, diagonalizing the matrix, which means solving the matrix. So you're going to have um, everything except for the diagonals that are going to be these elements. So that tells you that there's only one orientation of the, of the Cartesian system uh, in which this is true. But this is really general for, you know, for the vector. Um, so cool, that's what I have for today. Questions or comments?